dad is not dadding quite as hard. That uh-huh. sounds... <laughs> <laughs> not daddying so hard (laughs) all the time (laughs) what's up everyone and welcome to the weekly q a for our first question ormapa asks if anything will change now that dave filoni is chief creative officer at lucasfilm that's our main topic for this q a a lot of questions about that Uh, i already did a video about it back when the news dropped but still it's fun to talk about uh and molly didn't get to share any of her thoughts about it so Will anything change? I mean, I'm sure things will, but I honestly, right now, don't expect us to notice it. Like, if this announcement hadn't been made, I don't think we would have seen, like, changes in the final products of Star Wars stories and been like, hold on, something's different. Like, this this has Filoni all over it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think a ton is going to change. Obviously, now... Filoni is going to be brought into projects earlier on to kind of heed the creative side of things. So maybe he would do less hands-on writing and directing and more just overall creative process brainstorming towards the, the back end. That would be the only thing that I might see an actual change in. Yeah, I like I, I saw a lot of people like acting like the sky was falling and that and or season two and the acolyte are in trouble now. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, first of all, the acolyte is done as far as we know. I mean, like not done, done, but it, it's finished production and or was almost finished shooting. So I, I don't think there's going to be any changes in stuff that's been going on for a while. Mm. Uh, it's more in the future. And really, I think that my hope is that the big change we notice is fewer problems in production, fewer early announcements made that then fall through. Like that's mm. been the big thing of just, hey, we just hired these people and then they're going to make this movie and never mind, it's canceled. Like that's happened so many times. My hope is that we see less of that and that when someone comes in to say, like, we're thinking about doing a Star Wars story with them, they sit down with Filoni and they're like, here's my pitch. And he's like, "Okay, let's see where that fits in the timeline. Make sure it meshes. Like, I just keep going back to one of the few things that we have actually heard about him and the creative process with Favreau and how much of a collaboration that was. And Favreau saying at Star Wars Celebration, like, he never says no to an answer or an idea. Uh, He helps you refine it within Star Wars. Mm -hmm. So that's my hope, is that it's more things get smoothed over in the pre-production. But I I don't think Filoni is going to make big mandates or anything about what can and can't be created. Yeah. he. I I think this means he'll have a little bit more to do with the story group, which makes sense. Yeah. Right, he is so enmeshed in the story of Star Wars. He worked right next to George Lucas for so many years. So, I think he's the closest thing we have to George right now. So, for to put him in this head creative kind of place makes sense to me. Yeah, as, as this narrative driver, I think that's kind of where they put him. Is that Kathleen Kennedy is still in charge of the company? and the business side of things, Carrie Beck is going to be bringing in new storytellers, and then those storytellers will sit down with Dave, I assume, yeah. and he'll be more the narrative th- side of things. Yeah, it's it's hard because no one really knows exactly how this stuff works. People just assume or think that they know how it works. So it's, you know, people are quick to assume, like, oh, now Filoni's in charge of everything. Right. Not true. He's still got, you know, Kathleen Kennedy and... uh, Carrie Beck. Carrie Beck. um, Kind of on either side of him, you know, like you said, helping him with other stuff, the business side. And, you know, bringing in other creators, writers, directors. It's not just him making all the decisions. Right. And I think that there probably will be more of that... uh, misunderstanding just because he does now hold one of the titles that Kevin Feige has uh, because Kevin Feige is also uh, CCO of Marvel Studios but I think he's also the president 
So he is both like producer and narrative, mm-hmm. where uh, Filoni is just going to be narrative. And I know some people are afraid that, or some people are excited that Star Wars might become more like the MCU. I'm someone who I'm like, I don't want everything to connect in the same way. I don't need everything to lead into one another. Uh, a, a little bit of connectivity and consistency is fine, but like, I don't need uh, the Bad Batch to then have a post credit scene that tells us about the Acolyte. Like, here's the next project coming. Like, right. no, these things can be separate. Yeah, I mean, as long as we're working in a in the same timeline in the same couple of years, sure, we're going to see crossovers. Especially in the Mandoverse. Like that, I think, if yeah. Skeleton Crew has a little teaser for The Mandalorian Season 4, I understand that. That makes sense. But yeah, I I hope and I, and I don't think it will be turning into something like the MCU where we just get one project, boom, 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 like one after the other, kind of like all flowing together to then culminate in this one big event. I don't think that's going to happen. I hope not, because I want to be, still be able to like savor Star Wars, new Star Wars stuff that's coming out and like the movies especially. They Kathleen Kennedy talked about wanting to make the movies like a big event again. So I think they're going to take their time, get everyone's roles situated, and then hopefully, you know, have a a better time at making everything seem a little more cohesive. And I, I mean, I think that makes sense, especially now. It, it, Star Wars for the past few years, I don't think has on purpose made this big delay in Star Wars movies. Uh, but it, it has wound up giving us like the opposite problem of the, of the MCU where so many movies and TV shows were coming out that it, it got hard to keep up with. And now we're seeing like the Marvels didn't do well and not just like superhero movies. I was also shocked when Mission Impossible didn't really do that well at the box office. So the the movie industry right now is just like in chaos and they have to figure it out i don't know if it's in chaos but it's changing it's, it's, yeah it's dramatically changing and it's it's just different and it will be different going forward and i think production companies need to you know see that and understand that and adjust yeah well that i was gonna say that like barbie and oppenheimer through just <laughs> the way that fans latched onto them became these big event movies that people felt like they had to go see in the theater right away that was such a uh like an example of how binary our world is because it was like the women are gonna go see barbie and the men are gonna go see oppenheimer which is not the case but you know and then like everyone was going well we're gonna see both but which one are you gonna see first yeah 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 it just became like very apparent why i mean yes the marketing they did was great for for both of those, especially Barbie. But it just, like, happened to work out that way, you know? Yeah, but I'm, I'm kind of getting at the point that that felt like a big event, and I think that's what movies need to do now, is mm. really drive home the point that it's not just, hey, go see the next MCU movie or the next Star Wars movie so you keep up with that franchise. It's like, no, these need to feel big on their own. Yeah. So... That we we went way off of the, the <laughs> Filoni talk, but yeah. we, we can move on to the next Filoni question. <laughs> Lil God wants to know if Filoni's promotion will have long-lasting benefits to future projects. I hope so. I mean, we, I already touched on that I hope the pre-production side of things is a little smoother. But, you know, I, I don't want everything to become super connected, like I said. But I do think that Filoni is the right person for this job. Mm. Uh, he, as a narrative, like I know Star Wars and how to talk about it. Like I can't think of anyone better. Yeah. I think if we can get him away from maybe, uh, directing live action, writing dialogue, and then like more what he's really good at and like, he'll admit as much. Why don't you go ahead and read the next question too? Oh. <laughs> Cause I, we'll talk about them both. Michael Vecchio asks if Filoni's promotion will affect his plans to direct. I, we don't know that for sure yet, but I'm going to assume yes. I'm going to go with no. I'm going to hop on the opposite side. I think that he wants to direct 
a feature film. Uh, I think he's well, had yeah, that that's goal. A, that's already happening. We know that. Well, okay. You meant beyond that? Yeah, oh, okay. I guess. So you still think he'll direct the New Republic movie? Yeah. Okay. Th- that's where I was at. And then I don't know if he will continue to do that because I do feel like this is going to be a big job. Yeah. I mean, CCO. unless unless he just doesn't want to, but I, he hasn't necessarily expressed that, but maybe he will. I get the sense that he wants to. He's had that goal to move from animation into live action. He's done that in television. He's been a showrunner. I think he at least wants to get a live action feature film under his belt, at least for the experience. The Variety article said that he now understands the experience of directing live action so he can uh, be more informed when he's talking to creatives and directors and stuff, which I I appreciate that. And I agree that like sometimes his directing and his writing knocks it out of the park, but not every time. And so I I think that he would be in a great position to kind of do what George Lucas always said he wanted to do. (laughs) Yeah. Reading the the making of Star Wars books, especially the original trilogy, he was like, he had this idea where he would just produce Star Wars and other people would come in and write and direct. And when the prequels came around, like that just didn't happen. And that drove Cause, him into... Because everyone was kind of too afraid to touch it. Right. And But it, it's interesting that now I think Filoni kind of has a chance to take up that position that George wanted back then yeah i think to still be involved but not necessarily have to write and direct everything yeah he's in a great position to and and like maybe he had a part in this new title at lucasfilm maybe he was like i have an idea can i do this instead of all this other stuff like this is what i'm good at and they were like you know what yeah that is a good idea maybe and like i i don't want to make it sound like I, i am not excited for his new republic movie uh, I, I think that he's getting stronger as a director, but my favorite episodes of Ahsoka weren't directed by him. Well, never mind. I really liked episode five. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll give an example. Um, we're rewatching Avatar The Last Airbender right now, and I'm seeing like which episodes are written or directed by him specifically. And I think he really does well with animation because you have usually twice as many episodes to tell the story that you want to tell and maybe he'll get back into animation sometime soon and and maybe he prefers that because i think that is where he really shines I, i agree my favorite stuff that he has done is animated uh, Avatar included <laughs> and yeah. it's always fun to like finish an episode of Avatar and like be like oh yeah Filoni episode yeah. I knew why it was good <laughs> yeah and like I've talked about it a lot but when we rewatched Rebels I was like man this really is some of my favorite Star Wars storytelling ever but it should also be pointed out that all of those shows were more collaborative than I feel like streaming has become where Filoni was the writer for Ahsoka and with the Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels uh, and Avatar, like that was a writer's room, a bunch of people working together. So like, I just get the sense that Filoni is a really, really great collaborator. Mm. Uh, and just like Lucas, he could use some editors, some help with the script on occasion. It's funny, like I have a, an annotated version of the A New Hope script and there's a little star next to every line that someone had to come in and punch up. And all the best lines are written by someone else. Mm-hmm. It, that's just the case. And Lucas was like, I hate writing. That's, I mean, <laughs> he has straight up said that. I definitely think a lot of Star Wars, you know, that, that Filoni is in charge of, like writing and directing, I think the dialogue could use a lot of help. Yeah. I mean, there were some moments in Ahsoka, even in episode five with Anakin, I remember uh, Ahsoka saying, like, now's not a time to joke. And Anakin saying, well, would you prefer I'd be more serious? And she's like, I don't know. And he says something else. And she's like, I'd prefer it. And I'm like, this just feels a little clunky. Clunky is a good way to put it. But anyways, we're getting off topic again. Um, the long lasting benefits to future projects, I think, is a given. Just for the pure sense that 
one person is kind of overseeing the creative narrative, whereas before it was kind of like a ping pong ball going all over the place. So I definitely think we'll see long lasting effects. Hopefully they're good. I, I don't want to like open up the can. I'm going to do it, but I don't want to open up the whole can of worms of like what needs a plan and what doesn't. And like, oh, the original trilogy didn't have a plan. It kind of did blah, blah, blah. I still think that in this day and age, the sequel trilogy would have benefited from having a plan, an outline, or at least one consistent voice the way mm. we're like, no matter what, if you think that the original trilogy had a plan or not, George Lucas was there with his messaging and themes and what he wanted to say. Yeah. So now I feel like Filoni, while he's not going to tell people what to say with Star Wars, he can help guide that a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's a good thing. Yeah. And it, I don't think Filoni is going to step into a project like The Acolyte and change a bunch of stuff, no. especially now that, I mean, it's mostly already done, like you said, but even if it weren't, I don't think Filoni's plan is to step in and, you know, mess with everyone else's right. stuff. He's just there at the in the very beginning process of just like talking and brainstorming and outlining and saying like, well, this already exists. We could use this. And then it's like you said, it's very collaborative still. And hopefully it stays that way. You know, Carrie Beck is in charge of bringing in people to write and direct new people and like after the sag strikes we got uh something about writers rooms is happening yeah now. new series like are going to require writers rooms which i think is a great idea and i'm honestly i'm more interested in what that could do for future star wars projects than feloni's new position i i think that to your point about being involved earlier. Let's talk about like Dawn of the Jedi with James Mangold. I don't get the sense that James Mangold is steeped in like Star Wars lore. I think he has ideas of what he wants to do. And then Filoni can come in and be like, well, uh, we have these Mortis gods, if and they would kind of fit this idea that you have. Or maybe whatever Mangold wants has nothing to do with the Mortis gods and he wouldn't bring it in. But that's I, I feel like Filoni is going to be able to really help people refine the stories they want to tell with the messages they want and then fit it into Star Wars. Yeah. And I don't think he's there to steamroll anything. I don't know. Pe I, people yeah. <laughs> online, of course, had polarizing opinions where either this was the best news in the world or it's the worst thing they've ever heard. Yeah. And I just like, I, I don't know. I, I'm happy about it overall. I don't think it's... Like, I, I don't really think it's going to change things all that much. Once I sat down and read the whole article twice <laughs> and, like, really thought about it, I was like, this makes sense for him. This is kind of what he did from the earlier days. And like you said, it's what George wanted to do. Uh, so I think it makes sense. I, I like just about everything he has done in Star Wars. I really love hearing him talk about Star Wars, so like this this feels like a good fit to me. Mm. Today's video is brought to you by HelloFresh. The holidays are right around the corner, and HelloFresh can help take the stress out of dinner by delivering everything you need to cook up tasty meals right to your door, saving you tons of time. As YouTubers, Molly and I have a crazy and often unpredictable schedule, and the holidays are no different. That's where HelloFresh's 15-minute meals come in. These quick fixes help you get a wholesome meal on the table in less time than it takes to get delivery. So skip that extra grocery store trip and instead get fresh ingredients and delicious recipes delivered with HelloFresh. Just pick your meals, decide on a delivery date, and and sit back. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh has made it so much easier for Molly and I to enjoy cooking healthy meals together every night. We just choose from over 40 recipes every week to fit our tastes, so we're always trying new things. We've stepped up our cooking and tried all kinds of dishes we wouldn't have without HelloFresh. It not only saves us time, but also money. HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and 25% less expensive than takeout. That means less stress in your day and more money back in your pocket. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Star Wars free and use code Star Wars free for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash Star Wars free with code Star Wars free.
GoCubes wants to know what Star Wars characters we wouldn't want to invite to Thanksgiving. They already said Perrin is off the table because that's a given. Oh. Perrin, no <laughs> one wants such Perrin a good there. one. <laughs> yeah, I mean he he is the one. Let's talk about him anyway. He's the one that would come in and just say something real polarizing to the entire family and start an argument. So you, Hilo wants to be invited. <laughs> Don't worry, Hilo, you can come. Yeah, no, Perrin is is off the list. Permanent. He's a perma-ban. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll throw just about any Ewok on the list, only because uh, Thanksgiving, you know, you, you're ready for a more chill, relaxed, we're having dinner, it's nice, and we have seen the Ewoks party in <laughs> uh, The Princess and the Scoundrel, Mm. during Han's bachelor party and things get bad fast like they're not there for a chill time yeah <laughs> they're there for a good time also their meat preferences are questionable also true so like i wouldn't so trust whatever casserole they bring. whatever casserole that you walk brain i'm like what's in that yeah i don't believe you <laughs> <laughs> um who else i mean anyone that's trying to be there to just talk politics. Obviously, Palpatine would well, be a bad idea. Yeah, I mean, I feel like we just no Sith Lords. <laughs> Let's leave them out. I don't know if Borgullet would be a good or bad <laughs> character to invite because they can, they feed off of your feelings and your thoughts. So like... The, if the, the family gets into an argument, he's going to feast. Yeah. People have a lot of feelings and a lot of thoughts. The more uh, glasses of wine and the more turkey they have. So he I might mean, be having a great time, but I don't know that I would want him there. I wouldn't want Borgel at there just because I think I would lose my appetite. Mm. I'm like, I don't need I don't need to be thinking about him <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> while I'm stuffing my face. Yeah. Grievous, uh, no. Oh, he'd be great at carving the turkey, though. Oh, that's true. You do that, and then you got to leave. Uh, you promise to be chill, Grievous. He's going to cough on everything. Yeah. We don't need that. Jabba the Hutt. Oh, yeah. No one wants him slobbering all over everything and, like, trying to chain women up. I feel like the villains are easy pickings. Like, sure. Let, let's try to find someone who... I mean, Perrin is a villain, too, but I'm, I'm trying to find someone more on the middle ground or even a hero that we wouldn't want around. Itchy. I do not want <laughs> Chewbacca's father <laughs> in our living room with the mind evaporator on. Mm -mm. Nope. You save that for home, Itchy. <laughs> <laughs> Keep that business at home. <laughs> <laughs> not my house. <laughs> Edie Karn is another one that's like parent levels of annoying to have at any dinner party. She's going to be judging everyone's portion sizes and asking all the single people, why they're still single. Yeah. Yeah, that's, no. Just overbearing aunt, mother, whatever relative speaks to you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Framed Citizen asks, what Star Wars story we're most thankful for from 2023? I guess this is just, what's our favorite from 2023? And we're definitely going to do like a, a 2023 Q&A closer to the end of the year, but just to... As a little preview, I think my favorite as of right now, with one month to go, is Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Mm. I'm most thankful for that one, because I love Fallen Order. I'm thankful that the sequel was just as good, if not better, as far as gameplay mechanics go. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what all came out? I'm trying to, I'm trying to <laughs> narrow it down, because in my head, like... All this stuff runs together. From... The Bad Batch, Ahsoka, The Mandalorian, Young Jedi Adventures, lots of books and comics. <laughs> mm, I'm, you know, I'm tempted to say Mandalorian just because all the Grogu content. Sure. I might say that. Okay. I, I did really enjoy a lot of Mando season three. A lot of people thought it was hot garbage. I didn't think so. I didn't either. It was, you know, we like to throw the word clunky around. Some of it was kind of clunky, but I I loved a lot of it. Some of the story choices, I was like, hmm, that's not what I thought that was going to be. But 
Okay. We're going to talk about this a bit in a later question. Uh, what I think is going to change between seasons three and four, but season three still gave us that Keller and Beck moment, which is one of my favorite things from this year. Yeah. Uh, I still really loved episodes one and two. Um, I loved episode seven. Like there was still a lot of really great things that happened in season three. Mm -hmm. It just, it, it felt like a bit of a detour, but I'll, I'll save that for a future thing. Yeah. I will say though, Bad Batch is a close runner up because I just loved all of the story and character narrative choices that we got in Bad Batch season two, especially with tech and like his relationship with the rest of the Bad Batch and Omega was really good. And I still have not forgiven anyone for what happened. Are you still in denial? Yeah. Okay. Digipin92 wants to know our predictions for Grogu in The Mandalorian Season 4. So Digipin says that they felt Grogu got a little sidelined in Season 3, which I can kind of see. I do think that Season 3, like I said, felt like a bit of a detour, as if we're just going to handle all of the larger Mandalorian stuff. Yeah. Din was like, uh, hello, this is my story, actually. Yes, the kid is there. He's cute. We get it. So yeah, I, I kind of hope that season four will go back to basics a little bit for The Mandalorian, where it's just Din and Grogu. And yeah, there will be an overarching story, but it won't feel quite so serialized, which is weird to say now that I'm thinking about it, because I remember in season one, I was expecting it to be very serialized, and instead it was like Adventure of the Week. Mm. And now I miss that. Yeah. <laughs> and there definitely were Adventures of the Week in season three, but uh, it was a lot more about Bo-Katan, which I really liked, and Din. And I, I do think that Grogu kind of took a bit of a backseat. Yeah. I think it'll be interesting if Grogu gets a little more independence. Mm. Like if... Din starts to trust him a little bit more to, you know, go out and do some stuff on his own. Um, take take his own bounty. <laughs> maybe not that, but or or you know, if he does, maybe Din will step step I back a little. I can bring you in warm, or I can bring you in cold. He doesn't talk boop, like boop, that. Boop. He doesn't talk at all. <laughs> I don't like that voice for him. <laughs> but anyways, like if. Dad is not dadding quite as hard. That uh -huh. sounds... <laughs> He's not daddying so hard <laughs> all the time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm... You know I'm down for more Grogu stuff. So yeah, of course I... You are? I Of course I want to see more of him. And, you know, maybe it will be showing just little random adventures. Because like, what is it that he's supposed to do now I mean, exactly that i think the the he's... armorer said you have to take him on his adventures now or like <laughs> his trials or something and then he went to carson teva and was basically like hey send work my way i'll help you out so mm -hmm. i feel like every episode could be a new like carson teva sends them a mission impossible style like data disc yeah <laughs> little self-destruct in five seconds <laughs> but yeah i i do hope that season four gets back to basics adventure of the week obviously mandalorian stuff is still going to be involved but uh i feel like they wanted to just kind of tie up season three in a bow get the mandalorians back on mandalore yeah nethatir asks how we'd feel if pedro pascal were recast so den could take his helmet off more i don't think that's gonna happen i also don't think it needs to happen Yes, I want to see Din without his helmet more often. Uh, I I don't know if we're going to get that, uh, you know, because I don't know if Pedro just like doesn't have time to be in the suit and be on screen for this. I, you know, I wish he would devote a little more time. But if it's something that, you know, Dave and, and Favreau are like, we don't want your face in this, <laughs> which is a tragedy. Uh, then I guess he's like, well, I'm going to go do all these other movies and shows then. I mean, yeah, that, I think that's basically what the case is. But no, I don't want to recast him. No, I don't think they will. If it really 
needs to happen in the story that we're going to see Pedro's face again, which I hope it does. Like, I liked once a season or twice in season two that we would get that moment. And I hope it happens again. But it does seem like Din is committing to just keeping the helmet on at the end of season three. I do think that when they were first developing The Mandalorian, Disney Plus was this new thing. They didn't know how it was going to be. And yeah, they announced Pedro Pascal as the Mandalorian, but I think their intent was always that Brendan Wayne and Latif Crowder would be in the suit 99% of the time. Seems like a little bit of a bait and switch. Yeah. But I guess I understand. <laughs> uh, but I, I think that Pedro is like, well, if I'm not going to have to be on set, then I'll go be Mr. Fantastic. Reed Rogers. That's... <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm real up on my Fantastic Four lore. That's just a rumor still, right? I don't know anymore. But <laughs> he's regardless, he's still very busy. He's mm -hmm. going to be in The Last of Us, maybe Fantastic Four. He's a busy guy. So, mm -hmm. I mean, the, doing this is like the easiest money he's ever made. <laughs> just voiceover. Because now it's just a voiceover. Voiceover for a character that doesn't really talk all that much to begin with. But yeah, that's why I'm really glad that they have not kind of kept up with that charade it felt like for season one and now it's very open like brendan wayne latif crowder you come out at star wars celebration and get celebrated for the work you do mm. uh, I'm, I'm glad that they do that now i wonder if it is because of grogu he's like i'm never gonna live up to him so i'm never gonna show my face ever again i'm i'm sure that he wants to be on set holding that baby all the time he should but He's he's too busy. Absent father. For our last question today, we're going to do a conversation card like we've been doing. This one is, Jawas park their sand crawler in front of your home. What do you buy from them? I thought it was going to be, how do you get them to leave? <laughs> but what do you buy from them? What do I buy from them? A cute little droid. Oh, what kind of droid? Maybe like a BD droid or something if they've got if one. If they have one, yeah. Yeah. That'd be, you'd be hitting the jackpot. So I was thinking of real world stuff, like something that I want now. Uh, and I, I mentioned it to you earlier today, but I'm, I'm considering dabbling more in cosplay. I've been wanting to uh, make my own like High Republic brown and gold robes, but I don't know how to sew. And I don't know if I want to get like a full on sewing machine or if that's a hobby that's just gonna fall through. So if Jawas came up and they were like, hey, we got a, an old used sewing machine that we may or may not have stolen, <laughs> uh, I might buy it off of them. Yeah. Uh, if we're thinking of things that we think we'll use, uh, like like you said, a, a sewing machine, maybe like a, is it a COO droid, the cook droids? Oh yeah. <laughs> that like chop everything. I'm, not, I'm about to do a lot of chopping for Thanksgiving dishes, so. If I'm, if I'm looking for a specific droid, it would be one that could help me in the kitchen. That's a good idea. Basically just a, a walking or rolling, like, not KitchenAid, food processor. Yeah. <laughs> you could put potatoes in and it spits them out all sliced. Yeah. <laughs> or just one that cleans, you know, but cleans exactly how I want it to clean. <laughs> That's all the time we have for questions today. If you want to leave a question for next week's video, just put it in the comments below or sign up for Patreon to join our weekly Q&A discussion. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel. Follow us on X, Instagram, Threads, Blue Sky, and TikTok. And as always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.